let's uh, let's pray and start right okay father we we thank you lord for this day we thank you for giving us another new day and a new week ahead lord we commit this into your mighty hands we commit our ourselves we commit the time ahead into your mighty hands we pray that uh, lord that you would uh, speak to us father god as you always have and we we commit this semester ahead into your mighty hands father god and all the courses and especially this course that we are going to study together lord uh, we commit into your mighty hands we pray that you would um, lord speak to us that you would um, lord um, equip us lord and um, father god we pray that um, yeah you will just root us ground us lord in your word especially about the local church god we thank you we commit ourselves into your mighty hands in jesus matchless name we pray Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, so we are looking at this uh, semester, and uh, we're looking at this course called the Local Church, right? Um, very interesting course, very interesting paper, and um, yeah. So online students, you may have the PDF download in the uh, classwork section. Um, I think all of you have this textbook, yeah. And uh, this textbook, uh, the course uh, for this course is called the House of God, and it talks about the the local church. Right? Um, so, uh, so that is what we are going to look at. Yeah, uh, as we will have two two graded assessments, uh, one mid course and then one towards the end of the course, right? Two quizzes, and um, and that will be for our assessment, right? Okay, so yeah, um, so welcome back, yeah, Andrew and everyone else. So good to meet you guys in the class. So we are going to look, look at this very interesting uh, course, the house of God, you know, uh, the church. So we know that a church, when we say church, normally we look at it as the building, right? We refer to a building as a church. We refer to uh, a structure, the place of gathering as the church. But we know that the definition of church is goes a little deeper, right? It's really about people, right? So that that is what separates the church, the gathering of people from any other place of worship, so-called place of worship, right? Be it a temple or a gurdwara or a mosque where it refers to the place, it refers to the physical structure where people are gathering to, in order to worship, um, you know. But then when it comes to the church as defined by God, as defined by the scriptures, we see that it is a gathering of people, right? It is, we see that the Greek word ecclesia referring to a gathering of believers, the called out ones who are gathered together for a particular purpose. So that's the church. So it makes it very interesting. It makes it also very complex. Like in the sense, uh, we know that uh, it's a gathering of people. So it's not referring to the place or a building. So the church can meet anywhere. The church can meet, you know, any place. And so it's good. For us to look into the scripture and see what does God say, what does God really have to, uh, you know, describe about the church? Because all of us, if you look at it, all of us are part of the church. Right? We are part of, we are the body of believers, so we are the church. So it's important that we see, okay, how does, how should the church function, right? Spiritually, how does God look at it? How should the church function? How do we build the church? Right? How do we how do we go about ministering, you know, to the church and ministering through the church and so on? So it's very important that we that we need to understand that because, um, and I think all of us come from different. Um, okay, so there's a, then what should be the correct name of church building? Yeah, it is it is called the church. We can say you know it has different names, uh, like uh, several names given to the gathering, like all people's church. So, um, yeah, so the, the correct rendition of it is the church is gathering here. You know, the church is gathering in such and such a place and so on. Uh, but it has come to mean the church building. So our understanding is that um, 
yeah it, it is it is a gathering of believers right so so yeah simply put we, we can say the church meets here where does the church meet the church meets here this is the church location well, i think that would be a, a good way to put it right okay so um as we uh, as we look at um, the the church as we look at um, the gathering of believers okay so we we need to understand that um, all of us you know come from different churches right we have grown up maybe or maybe once we became a believer we came from a non you know christian background so we became part of a church we started going to a church and if you notice you know um like how many of you have come from a traditional church let's say a csi or a cni or a methodist anyone okay methodist methodist church anybody from lutheran okay lutheran also i'm sorry i forgot to mention that lutheran church uh, anglican church anyone anyone online you could just put your hand up anybody from a you know trad- like a marthoma um, i'm talking about okay pentecostal i'm talking about non pentecostal churches first okay so traditional right so in some of these churches there is a liturgy which means there are prayers that are actually printed out anybody gone to any has anyone visited a, a traditional church like a methodist church or a csi church okay um maybe you you know daniel says you're from a okay a methodist csi pentecostal okay who else any other churches lutheran uh sorry catholic church okay you you are part of a catholic church oh, oh you're just saying okay so yes. anybody from any any other church background that we left out ha huh? hebron hebron church okay which is what uh, is is it called the brethren assembly yeah brethren assembly okay then what about you brother uh, hindu for background you came to the church so which church did you start attending first what is it what is it called adonai church okay so it's a um, right 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 so it's a it's an independent spiritual uh, kind of a church okay so you see that church churches um there are in all forms you know in all Uh, i would say formats of worship and so on uh, traditional non traditional uh, i know that in some churches it is a sin to clap hands you know in fact i was there at one of the church service and um, i think after a song uh, people just spontaneously clapped hands and the pastor actually reprimanded them he said uh, please you know we need to revere god here in this place so please don't clap hands okay so so you see all those extremes right so so all these kinds of forms and yeah brethren jehovah's witness is again a, it would come as a cult and uh, you know it's not a traditional church but yeah. so so we have all this so basically our understanding of church would come from where we actually grew up as a believer and right. see i went to a csi church uh, and that is where uh, you know in one of the youth groups in the youth group meetings i came to know the lord so my understanding of okay how should we actually gather together what we should do in a church how we should worship and how a uh, what should the church involved be like in terms of outreach or ministries my understanding would come from that right that this is what it is why wait this is what everybody did that is what everybody does around me you know in a csi church typically you would go and um, you know um the yeah there is um there is what we would call as you know s- several names are there you know several terms are there what we would have as a matins okay okay this uh, i think i'm pronouncing it correct but matins is a church service without holy communion okay so without holy communion so it would end so there would be two what we would call as um, benedictions 
right? You know what a benediction is. Like it's a blessing pronounced, um, the Lord be with you and, and you know, uh, and, and so on. You know, probably number six, you know, God bless you and keep you and all that. Uh, just to before blessing and dismissing. There would be two benedictions, you know, matins, that would be the final benediction. But if it's a Holy Communion service, there would be a benediction before communion. So those who want to leave can leave. Then, you know, one bunch would leave. And then people, some people would still be there. And they are part of the, you know, they want to stay on for the Holy Communion. So after that, there would be another benediction. You know, some, some of these things. And uh, in some churches, there is this, you know, cross being taken in at the beginning of the service. Right, so there is a ceremonial procession from the entrance of the church till the there is an altar. You know, again, there is an altar in some of the churches, right? And some churches, I recently attended a wedding where they called, you know, there is a high altar. So all these things are there, right? So when we say church, you want you know our may, our understanding is the church we grew up in, or maybe the church where we are worshiping. Okay. So it's good for us to look into the Word of God and see what church is, right? What is church all about? Is it just something that we do on Sundays? We definitely know as Bible college students and as mature believers that it is not a building. So it's much beyond that. So what is the spiritual understanding of it? What is the spiritual dimension of the church? And, and what does the Lord want the church to be? How does He want it to be? So best place to look is into the Word of God, where we see what is called as a blueprint. Right? We see a blueprint, and we know a blueprint, you know, if when we need to build a house, the architects put together a blueprint, and it shows, okay, this is where the window is, this is where the doors are, this is the dimension, etc. So we see uh, the blueprint for a church in the Word of God. Okay, But it's not found in one place, right? It's not like, God giving 10 instructions, 10, you know, like the 10 commandments or 10 or 15, you know, instructions saying, this is what you do in a church. This is how you start a church service. This is how you end. No, you don't find it there. Because we see that it is different communities, different cultures, right? All that is there. And, and, and the beautiful thing is that the design for church accommodates all that. Accommodates all that, right? Okay, this is the culture in a particular place and it's fine. As long as the core, you know, what is central to being in a church and what the church is gathering for, as long as that is not compromised, right? Because we are gathering in the name of Jesus. We are because that's you know that is our focus. He is our focus. The Word of God is our focus, right? So, in this course, we are looking at you know all that, mainly to discover what is God's blueprint. To discover that. Discover that means to search and see, okay, God, you know, in the word, this is what we see. This is what we see as your blueprint, and this is what we see as you know, certain things that can be done, that and certain things that cannot be done. Okay, so we discover it. Secondly, we also want to follow or build or develop the local church in these ways. Okay, so for somebody who's you know who wants to plant a church, who wants to start a church, you know, this would be a wonderful understanding. Equipping, we we understand that okay, this is something that we can do. You know, this is how how we need to develop our church congregation into. Right, these are certain areas that we need to develop. Maybe we find that okay, so in some areas, you know, there's a lot of emphasis. Some there are not. So we can actually develop in these ways. Okay, so we want to discover and develop, discover and to um, and to build up. Right, okay. So God has given us the blueprint um, for the local church, uh, and the Word of God accommodates. You know, God is a creative God, so there's uh, creative expressions. You know, there's a place for that that accommodates all that. So we see that. Okay. So when it comes to our ministry, our responsibility, our responsibility. You know, we could be serving in church. In different ways, right? maybe you're called to the fivefold ministry as a pastor. Maybe you're called as a, you know, as a worship leader, as a youth pastor, or a, you know, you're the senior pastor. Whatever, you know, uh, whatever way in which you are, you know, engaging in the church. Right? Our responsibility is when we discover from the Word of God that 
he, this is what a church should be. Our responsibility is to develop the church in those ways. Okay, so maybe we are heading a ministry, and we need to develop in in these aspects. Okay, or maybe you know teach an understanding that church is not about you know just gathering on Sundays, for example. Church is not about you know budgets and you know yes, all that is there, but it goes beyond that. Right. Church is not just an administrative side of things, and God looks at the, this body of believers in a very different way. You know, much like how in our first semester, how we studied in Christ, that how we, you know, and I'm I'm sure that you know if we have really taken that revelation to heart and put it to practice, it would have just completely transformed our lives, right? Because it's a new identity that we receive about us being believers. Same way. The very same way, you know, the church also, you know, it just kind of completely changes, revolutionizes the way we look at a body of believers, right? Saying that, hey, this is how God sees, this is the identity of a church. Therefore, we cannot take things for granted. We, you know, there is so much that God has made us as a church. So there's so much for us to walk in, there's so much for us to discover. There's so much for us to experience. Right? So it's very exciting. Okay, So with that, let's look at um, uh, chapter 1. Okay? Let me just try and... Um, online students, you can actually uh, download um, the PDF onto your laptops, phones, whatever, and use it. But uh, let me just um, share it here as well. Okay. Um, okay, is that big enough? So we're looking at the first chapter, the church, its um, spiritual and natural dimensions. Right? Okay. Um. Okay. So uh, we'll we'll start by looking at Matthew chapter sixteen, right? Matthew chapter sixteen, very interesting. The Lord Jesus, in his conversation with Peter, right, has asks him a very very pertinent question. Right? That is what we see. Matthew chapter 16, verse 15, he says, uh, <coughs> excuse me, he, he asked the disciples, who do you say that I am? Okay, who, do, who, I, who am I? Who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answers, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Verse 17, Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And then he goes on to say something, right? Verse 18. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Okay. And the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So so quite a bit of you know revelation understanding the lord packs in you know these verses right so first of all who is he he is jesus the christ the son of the living god okay so peter answers that and then he says the lord says that you know you did not get a natural understanding of this but it was this understanding this revelation you received this from my father he's the one who revealed this to you okay and on this rock you know he calls simon the, which means the meaning is reed, uh, and he calls him St Peter, Petros, the stone or the rock. And and also, you know, it could also mean on this revelation, right? On this rock. On this rock, I will build my church, okay? Which means that the Lord is the foundation, the Lord is the starting point, the cornerstone. And on this, I will build my church, he says. And several things we can understand from here. So the Lord is saying that I will build my church. So who is building it? The Lord, right? The Lord Jesus, right? So he says, I will build, which means, you know, he is the originator or creator of the, or the designer or the architect, that he will build the church. And if you notice, what does it say? It says that I will build my church. So, you know, though he uses people, as leaders, as pastors, as 
you know people in the church to serve him we cannot say you know the church belongs to me right as a pastor i cannot say you know i cannot rightfully say my church right because the church actually belongs to him so what what does the church refer to church refers to ecclesia the people of god you know we we we'll, we we'll look at it uh, again so so what is the lord saying i will build my people i will build my called out ones the gathering of people i will build and he's saying i will build my church these are my people right so he's saying i own them not anyone else they belong to me right he is the one who possesses the church so if we get clarity it will actually liberate us right we don't own anybody we don't own people right they don't belong to us yes we ha we have god gives us the spiritual authority at the same time it's something that you st we steward right we shepherd the people we nurture but they don't belong to us they belong to jesus right i will build my church what else does he say okay he goes on to say i will build my church which is very reassuring for anybody who is planting a church the lord is going to build he says the and the gates of hades will not prevail okay when we look at a gate gate is something through which we enter a gate is something which also keeps out right which means it's a center it's like a power center right um where access to any place is either controlled controlled meaning you know you if the gate is locked you cannot come in right so gate so we go to the gate and uh, we access the gate we enter through the gate so here he's saying the gates of hades shall not prevail against it what does that mean it means that the power centers of hell the powers of darkness shall not prevail shall not pre mean, meaning they will not be able to overpower they will not be able to overthrow against what against the church the gates of hades will not prevail against it okay and another thing that we see is that uh, about the gates gate is a place where you know in the ancient cities they the leaders sat at the gate they sat there they discussed things they uh, about what to do about the city they gave counsel and so on you know uh, resolve matters uh, problems and so on so 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 this is something that he's saying that the gate is an important place a gate is a you know a important uh, uh, location so the lord is saying that i will build my church and the gates of hades they will not prevail okay another second the second thing that he says is that something that we see is about keys what does he say right yeah what does he say about keys i will give you right i will give you he's talking to the body of believers again he said i will give you the gates or oh, sorry the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven okay so what does keys mean what does keys represent okay keys represent authority okay for example in revelation 1 and verse 18 the lord says that he has the keys of hades and hell and death right when he when he introduces himself he says you know i am the resurrection and the life he says i have the keys we meaning that he has the authority okay the one who has the keys he he or she has the authority right so he says i have the keys of hades and death right so it keys represent authority so what is he saying here he's saying to the church i will give kingdom authority so again it's a great privilege he's saying i will give you the keys of the kingdom and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven is you know and uh, the understanding is this that whatever we see bound or what heaven wants to bound we bind here on earth with the kingdom authority that he's given us with the gates with the keys of the kingdom of heaven that he's given us so what do we bind we bind what heaven wants to bind we bind what heaven wants to release on earth we release with the kingdom authority 
so you see that church is much bigger the purpose of the church is much greater than just gathering just you know having fellowship just having bible study just listening to a sermon no we have been given kingdom authority to bind and loose right to bind to bind meaning to restrict to bring to an end what god wants to be brought to an end right and it refers to whatever the powers of darkness are doing and whatever you know the 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 enemy is doing on earth so it brings to bring to an end right whatever is whatever god wants us to bring to an end and also to start and to release right to release on earth to to bring into earth whatever god wants to bring in okay so you see that um, he wants to do it through the church the body of believers now when you look at the term uh, ecclesia or the church you know it refers to generally you know it's not just a spiritual term or it's not just a, you know it's not just a term that is meant for a christian usage but it, in greek it meant a gathering of citizens right a gathering of a body of citizens to discuss to maybe you know bring in some solutions regarding the nation or state or whatever right so for us you know we see that the way in which the context in which it is used it refers to the called people who are called out okay so we've been called out of darkness into light we've been called out of death into life right we've been called out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of jesus so we are the called out ones the ones who respond to that call and and we have actually gathered with a definite clear purpose to do this you know to release to bind uh, and to bring in kingdom authority i mean to walk in kingdom authority and to bring in kingdom purpose on the earth okay so so which means that for the church you know the, the a church could be you know we're going to look at you know different church structures a church could be a few believers who are gathering in a house right they are meeting faithfully and uh, what we would maybe call as a house church they are meeting there or it could be a huge mega church like thousands maybe 10000 believers gathering and whatever is there in between but god's purpose for the church is that this body of believers will walk in kingdom authority so he's saying i give you the keys of the kingdom which means i give you a kingdom authority i give you the permission i give you the authorization to do what to bring in kingdom plans and purposes right whatever god wants done maybe in that territory maybe in you know whatever god wants done in far away lands also but through that body of believers so he's saying this is what i want the church to be you know in matthew chapter 16 very clearly the lord says you know i will build my church i give you the keys of the kingdom and whatever you bind is bound meaning you know and also you know the the scholars say that the correct usage of it or the rendition of it is that whatever is bound in heaven you bind here or whatever is not allowed in heaven you don't allow here or whatever is allowed in heaven released in heaven you allow here so so that's you know that changes our perspective of church right our understanding of church just completely changes okay so we'll um, take a quick break and then we'll come back uh, at 10 a.m. right in 10 minutes 10 o'clock thank you